Hours go by without any progress on the antiderivative. You rack your brain a thousand times and nothing happens. The function stares back at you without budging. Tears well up in your eyes as your vision gets distorted. But the one crystal clear thing you can see is that merciless function, taunting you as you lose your mind. But you remember one thing from class. A method to solve antiderivatives called something sub? V sub? No, 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 no. F sub maybe? No, no. It wasn't that either. Wait. The name suddenly pops up in your head. U sub. U substitution. So to begin, what is U sub? Well, according to Khan Academy, U substitution reverses the chain rule for derivatives, allowing us to integrate these types of functions. Now that wording alone is extremely important. It reverses the chain rule for derivatives. This means that the U sub will work best on composite functions, or functions with two variables multiplied to each other, but also related by the chain rule. That might have been a little confusing, so let me give a few examples. Let's go back to the equation that the super sad student who was crying was struggling on. The integral of e to the power of x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 3. You'll notice that there are two clear variables multiplied to each other. Now the other criteria also shows itself here. You can see that the x to the power of 4 up in the e and the x to the power of 3 are related by derivatives. If we take the derivative of e to the power of x to the power of 4 right now, it would result in e to the power of x to the power of 4 times 4 times x to the power of 3. So already you can see how similar these two functions are. They're just different by the constants. That's the key that we're trying to do here. Let's look at another function. The integral of x to the power of 3 divided by 2 plus x to the power of 4 all to the power of 2. This one may look daunting, but remember the criteria. There are two variables being multiplied or divided, in this case they're being divided, and they are clearly a product of the chain rule. The variable up here is multiplied because of the resulting derivative of x to the power of 4. So pretty much, if you notice that one of the variables being multiplied is the derivative of the other, chances are it is a u sub case. Now let's move on to the u sub itself. u sub has five different steps. First, substituting u with a value, then taking the derivative of u, then subbing u into the equation, then integrating, and then subbing x back in. To show the steps better, I will be solving the integral that the sad student was struggling with, and then at the end I'll show you another integral solved with u sub once we've learned all the steps. So let's begin. Starting with the first step of substituting a value with u. This step involves making u equal to some value containing x. For u sub, the best value to equal to u would be the one before the derivative. The reason for this is because the next step will involve us taking the derivative of u. So for the integral of e to the x to the 4th power times x to the 3rd power, the value before the derivative would be x to the 4, since x to the 3 is the derivative of that. So we make that u. So we have the integral of e to the u times x to the 3. Underneath that, we have the equation u equals x to the 4. Although that equation definitely seems very obvious, it's important to write that down on a test or when you're working it out so that it doesn't look like we randomly replace x with u. And it will be very important for the next step as well. Speaking of which, the next step is to take the derivative of u. So we use this bottom equation. Since we want to take the derivative with respect to x, u will become du dx, and our u value will be the derivative. In the case for our example integral, u equals x to the 4 turns into du dx equals 4 times x to the 3rd. Now you might be able to see where we're going with this. 4 times x to the 3 is one constant multiple away from being x to the 3 in our integral. Now for the next step of subbing it in. So is all we do sub it in? We just sub this part in? No, not yet. There's still one element that's stopping us from moving forward, and it's this in the integral. The integral must evaluate with respect to some variable, and in this case for us, it's dx. But if we want to evaluate u, 
we must evaluate with respect to you or du. In U substitution, your main goal is to have an integral with only U variables inside, all with respect to du. That is by far the hardest step, and if you take anything away from this video, I want you to take away that you need to have an integral with only U variables inside, all with respect to du. So for this to happen with our integral, you'll notice that the only two remaining x variables left are x to the 3 and dx. And that's exactly what we have in our u sub equation. We just have to rearrange it for it to become du equals 4 times x to the 3 times dx. Now since the x to the 3 in the integral equation is a naught multiplied by 4, we just have to move 4 to du for it to become 1 fourth du equals x to the 3 dx. Now it is exactly the same as what it was in the integral and we can replace it in the equation. So for our fourth step, we have integration. This is the easiest step and all you really have to do is just take the antiderivative of this integral. So for us, we have the integral of 1 fourth e to the u du. Since the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the other way is also the same for integrals. And so we get 1 fourth e to the u plus c as our final answer. Now for the last step, it's substituting the x variables back in. Remember, we started with x variables, so we have to end with them. So using the equation u equals x to the power of 4 from earlier, we substitute that into all the u variables, and we get a final answer of 1 fourth times e to the x to the 4th power plus c. And that is our final answer. Now to check our answer, we just have to take the derivative of this expression and see if we get the original question. So e to the x to the 4th stays the same, but chain rule gives us multiplication of 4 times x to the 3. And so then the 4s cancel out, and so that we get e to the x to the 4 times x to the 3, exactly the original. So now we know it's correct, and this is how u sub works. So now that we've gone through all the steps for u sub, let's try the example I gave before. Here we have the integral x to the 3 divided by 2 plus x to the 4 to the power of 2. If you want to try this on your own, you can pause right now. But moving on, let's begin with the first step. We can see that the x to the 3 is the derivative of x to the 4. So we make x to the 4 equal u. But since we're taking the derivative, we can also include the plus 2 term within the u because it will be eliminated once we take the derivative. So it will be the same either way and it just makes it easier. Now for the second step, take the derivative of 2 plus x to the 4, which would be 4 times x to the 3 equals du over dx. The third step involves us multiplying dx on both sides to match the integral and we finish with 1 fourth du equals x to the 3 dx. This is exactly what is shown on the integral, and so then we substitute that whole thing into the integral to give us 1 fourth du divided by u to the 2. So now you can see we only have u in the integral, and it's all to, with respect to u, so we can move on. Now for the next step, we integrate this function. We leave 1 fourth out since it's a constant for now, and evaluating 1 over u to the 2. We can rewrite it as u to the negative 2, which makes it more clear that the antiderivative is negative u to the negative 1, according to the power rule. So our final expression would be 1 fourth negative u to the negative 1 power plus c, or negative 1 over 4u. Then finally, for our very last step, we substitute 2 plus x to the power of 4 back in, and we get negative 1 over 4 times 2 plus x to the 4 plus c. If you want to check it, you just have to take the derivative of it and see if it results in the original question. But that's a job for our student here to do. It's definitely not just me being lazy. Now you know how to do u sum. It's a simple 5 step process, but one that can be very confusing. And just remember that u sum works best on composite functions with derivative relations. So keep a close eye on that. I've had many times where I've used u sum in the wrong situation and it makes my job a lot harder than it needed to be. Now our student is done and can lock in for other things. Wait, maybe not. Okay, well he's just playing build battle, so I'm gonna play that as well. So best of luck with your studies, and bye bye